thousands of steamboats arrived yearly, turning the town of St. Paul into a crucial transportation hub for the region. I like this country very well, and I think I shall like it still better the longer I live here. Your affectionate grandson, James Hill. St. Paul was actually a very logical place to go if you were trying to seek your fortune, if you were on the make. James quickly immersed himself in things related to the Mississippi River trade, warehousing, shipping and receiving. Hill was like a sponge. He acquired from those he was around. He learned from those he was around. Within two years, James' bookkeeping job at J.W. Bass & Company now included work as a shipping agent, tracking freight and unloading steamboats. He was required to have a command of the accuracy of invoices and the accuracy of receipts and the accuracy of measures and weights. His whole livelihood depended on this. He was now earning twice the salary he had made back home. While the town had grown from 1,000 residents to over 10,000 in its first decade, St. Paul was still referred to by many as Pig's Eye after a popular tavern owned by the first white settler to the area. It was a pretty rough frontier environment. A lot of saloons, a lot of gambling, a lot of prostitution, all those things that go with uh, frontier environments. One night, while walking home from work, Jim and a friend were approached by a notorious gang known as the Chicago Star Cleaners, who insisted the two join them for a drink. I told them I did not drink. We attempted to go on, but they tried to have us go back. So I hauled off and planted one two in the Paddy's grub grinder and knocked him off the sidewalk about eight feet. James J. Hill. Jim had been stabbed just below the ribs, but despite doctor's orders to stay in bed, he was soon back to work. <laughs> 